Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to be talking about why expensive knives rock. And we're going to be breaking that down into three primary components and using each of these blades to explain those or elaborate them. So these blades, just to get them out of the way, are the 3DK MAK, the JBK Layman, and the BRK Bushcrafter. But we're going to be jumping into why they each individually embody why expensive knives rock. But first, I will preface this as I do for continuity's sake, and that is that I don't think expensive knives are actually the most important piece of a bushcrafting, bushcrafting survival or wilderness self-reliance kit. Expensive knives are very nice, and if you do spend a lot of time outdoors, it is important to upgrade your kit as a whole to have quality items that will continue to serve you well and last, last the test of time. But as I have said in other previous videos, I do think that the most important tools to hammer out is to get a good saw, a good hatchet, and or axe, and then work on getting a good knife. Because a lot of cheaper knives, especially Mora's, Condor's, and such, will perform just about as good as these blades. And when it comes to expensive knives, it really is a diminishing gains kind of theory because these knives do just slightly edge out their uh, cheaper counterparts. But honestly, a $40 Condor Pterosaur will do 85 to 90% of what any of these three blades will do. So to get that extra, you know, 15 to 10% better, uh, you have to spend substantially more money. Okay, so let's just assume that you do finally kind of get your bushcrafting set up ready or to where you like it as far as hatchets, axes, and saws go, and you are ready to step up your knives or step up the knife game as a whole. Now, this expensive knife kind of comparison or breakdown will really apply to more expensive knives like $200 and up. Uh, there are some exceptions to this rule in both regards. There are some expensive knives that suck and there are some cheaper knives that do bring a lot of value. But by and large, your more expensive knives are going to feature some, if not all of these properties. So let's jump right into it. So the first one is going to be quality materials. So what I mean by quality materials is I mean that you are going to see, especially one of the largest ones is upgraded blade materials. Now luckily and a nice thing about a lot of things like handle materials, things like G10 are more affordable to produce and manufacture. So you are seeing things like G10 on cheaper knives, especially mid-range knives. So handle materials may not always be a increase or something that is uh, stepped up, but almost always with blade materials slash heat treat is where you're going to see the biggest difference. And of course, this is the biggest seed difference is going to be in edge retention and the in edge retention, shock resistance, and corrosion resistance, and a handful of other kind of properties, but usually your higher quality steels will have one, if not all of these different properties. And so, especially with super steels, you can get a lot of good edge retention and corrosion resistance and shock resistance, especially out of things like CPM 3V, but 80 or K110, which is what this blade is made out of is pretty excellent in those regards too. It may not be the most stainless steel, but it certainly is more corrosion resistant than something like 1095 or some of your lower end, you know, high carbon steels. So definitely you are going to see an upgrade in materials and you will feel it in edge retention and in other regards. So you can have a thinner steel that is more shock resistant. And so that means that it's less likely to chip, break or snap, and especially when it's ground thinly and when it comes down to an, a fine edge. So those are where you're going to notice and feel the impact of quality materials. In addition, the last part of quality materials that you may see is also different types of sheaths. There are a handful of different types out there, uh, primarily leather or Kydex like this one, or you will even see some combinations of both. I know Winkler Knives is very popular uh, or very known for making a leather wrapped or leather encased Kydex sheath. So you see uh, these types of things in more expensive knives. 
So the next one is going to be the BRK Bushcrafter, and this is going to be superior design. Now this one might be a little bit more subtle because you'll look at a lot of knives and you'll say, well, that knife is a well-designed knife. And where I truly mean when it comes to well-designed is that when you have expensive blades that are made by uh, smaller companies, they usually put a lot of time, a lot of practice, and a lot of uh, field time into those designs. So what that means is that they didn't just drop a cool sketch on a piece of paper, put it in their CAD, and make this cool blade happen or come to life. They, they use their experience, oftentimes from other knives, and they combine their experience with either training, with teaching, with knowledge, and then they use that to make prototypes. And through those prototypes, they distill out and make a really solid design. So part of this is ergonomics. So your design for like handle shape and fit, but also really the blade shape and design. And part of that design can also be your grind, your grind angle. This one is a nice representation because the BRK Bushcraft is a Scandi Vex. So on a more traditional bushcrafting knife, you might see a, you know, just straight flat angled Scandinavian grind. But through testing, uh, Bark River Knives found that the Scandi Vex, which is a convex ground Scandinavian grind, uh, offers more or better edge stability and prevents your edge from chipping, breaking, or cracking. And so that is the type of design elements that you see in expensive knives knives and once again these are things that are very easy to overlook just looking at this blade from a side profile you might just think oh it's another Scandinavian ground bushcrafting blade but when you really dig deep into it and you find that you know there's purpose there's design there's reason behind everything that is done with these blades then you find that they're actually pretty darn good and that makes them perform once again you know it's about closing that 10 to 15 percent better gap and it's these little things they these purposeful designs, these better designed materials that make these blades perform at just slightly higher levels. So the last one for me is going to be ergos and finishing touches. Now we've talked about ergonomics uh, in the past, or so we talked about ergonomics with the last one with superior design, but really that does come to a head when you look at a lot of expensive knives. One of the primary things that it defines them when holding and when using them is not just their edge retention, but also the way that they feel. Ergonomics comes back to how they are kind of designed. You know, these blades are made into prototypes, and those prototypes are used to distill features and components and design elements that make a knife fit and feel right in your hand and so these finishing touches these design elements and ergonomics really come to a head uh, with expensive knives because of that reason and with uh, finishing touches things such as a tapered spine these are small elements that you're not going to see on mass produced knives because it's one very hard to do that in mass and two uh, it's, it's something that's easily overlooked and once again it helps boost that knife into that upper percentile of being finished being comfortable being high performance but it really does make a difference. And if you are the type of person that will sit there and use their knife for hours, carving different things, processing different uh, plants, different animals, different things, uh, you know, you, these are design elements that you will ultimately feel. You know, having a knife that is supremely comfortable in your hand, that feels right, that has just that little bit of tweak to make, you know, that pinky and ring finger line up with your middle and pointer finger makes it really nice and very comfortable and does ultimately make a big difference. And finally, like I said, finishing touches like that tapered spine, like a multi-layered micarta handle, you know, these aren't necessarily going to this is going to make the knife perform like a superstar or make it so much better that you have multicolored liners or that you have pins that are, you know, hollow. Uh, but ultimately, these are things that are custom touches that make you proud to own the knife. And so part of it also kind of has this factor that you should be proud of the blades that you have. They should make you happy. You know, this kind of fizz factor that I've talked about before that I borrow from Regular Star, it really does exist. And when you have knives that make you just happy to use them, happy to own them, then it also makes it you happy to go outside and really spend time out in the wilderness 
this because you know you'll get to use some blades and some tools that do make you happy and so that is kind of the last component and it's a little bit of an intangible but when we are talking about closing that 15 to 10 percent gap you know the condor pterosaur can do 85 to 90 percent of what any of these blades can do it's just how do you close that last 15 to 10 percent gap of what do these knives do better so in closing, those are the three primary elements that make expensive blades rock in my mind. Um, like I said, everyone will have their own opinion, and yes, more affordable blades will do most of what these do, but these do a handful of things that cheaper blades just simply can't do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this helps, and hopefully this explains why awesome knives rock if you can get them. As always, God bless, and I'm out.